Hello everyone, this is 3DX and welcome to another video. So in this one, I'm going to be creating a uh, kind of like a magical looking tree. It's technically a tree, I know it's a little round but it's, it's a tree. So it's a magical looking tree that has like a face just to go along with the whole, you know, kind of like Halloween type of thing, type of vibe. You know, it's like a, kind of like a pumpkin face on it. Uh, carving on it and so I'm going to be creating this first in Maya so I'm going to be modeling in Maya for the most part using sub D and primitive objects as well and this one took a little bit longer than usual so I'm going to have to speed this one up a little bit and also skip some of the parts for the actual uh, video here so so if you see some time skips, that's because this one took a little bit longer. I think it took about four hours to create. So I have to skip a few parts here in the shorter version of the video. Of course, the uh, regular speed videos are in the premium page or the Patreon as well. As well as Gumbler as well if you don't want to join uh, the monthly premium page. Uh, but anyway, so I'm going to be essentially following the concept here. And like I mentioned, I'm going to be using some D modeling to create the model. And then once I'm done here in Maya, what I'll do is I'll take it into ZBrush, just because this one requires a little bit more sculpting for that to add some more details. And then finally, I'm going to be adding the textures within Substance Painter. So the key to this model is to uh, create some of the uh, branches in a way that they can be reused uh, because you don't necessarily want to create unique pieces for everything you can always create it in a modular fashion where you can create you know branches that you can reuse across the model so in this case I created a flat branch that I'm going to reuse across the entire model later on once I'm done with the modeling process and also the ones the roots that are in the front. Notice that I only created uh, a set of roots that you can see in the front and I'm going to reuse those for the back as well. For the most part because you don't, you're not going to see the model, um, you're not going to see all the roots at once anyway, so you can get away with just reusing them across the model. Uh, one thing I tried to do was to make the topology a little bit more animation friendly just in case uh, this could be used for uh, animation, but honestly I could probably go further with that and just kind of clean it up a little bit better. Uh, my idea was not necessarily to animate it, but just in case I made the topology for the uh, around the eyes and the mouth in a way that it could potentially be animated, just in case. And then I created obviously the interior of the mouth. And the interior is mostly just going to be glowing, it's just going to be an emissive that you see. So it's not going to be hyper detailed or anything like that, and there's not going to be anything back here, other than it's just going to glow for the most part. And then as you can see I start to UV this, uh, I want to UV them before I start to duplicate anything that I'm going to be reusing because I don't want to have to mess with the UVs again. So you want to do that uh, before you, you know, start duplicating any pieces of the model. So for UVs I'm going to be doing for the most part just uh, planar map, cutting edges and then unfolding. And for the actual body, I'm just going to separate the mouth and the eyes so that they are separate. And I usually just like to make cuts wherever there's like a 90 degree change in the geometry. 
And so finally, I'm just going to uh, pack this. And then as you can see, I started to duplicate some of the pieces that I'm going to reuse, uh, including the roots and just the branches as well. So those are essentially duplicates of the ones that I did the UVs for. And I'm just going to merge that as a one model since I don't have to sculpt that or do anything with it. It's for the most part just going to be used so that I can see it in Substance Painter. And then after that I'm going to import to ZBrush. And I also named the models underscore high and underscore low and kept all the pieces separate. This is so that I can bake by name. And then in uh, ZBrush, um, for the most part, just going to be using Dynamesh and just kind of clean up some of the uh, hard edges. So I do want this to look more organic, not too... Um, so it doesn't have too many hard edges as well. So I'm just going to clean it up here and then start to add some of the details. Now I'm using the Orb Stream Extreme Polish for this. And then I'm going to be using the Orb Curve just to add some of the uh, lines here. You could also use the Dan Standard as well for this. So I don't want to go overboard with this one, I just want to keep it relatively simple. And essentially I'm going to follow the same process for the branches as well. Just kind of smooth it out a little bit and then just add a few lines here. And then I'm going to extract this and I'm going to use that essentially as the, uh, it's kind of like, just kind of grass, well not grass, just kind of green overgrowth growing at the bottom, which is growing at the bottom of the tree here. As, as well, I'm going to keep this one relatively simple, I'm just going to use the clay just to build it up a little bit, but I'm not going to go overboard with it. And then in Substance Painter, what I'm going to do is use my stylized uh, 3DX material. As always, there is a link to a tutorial that I made for how to create that in the video description. So I'm going to be using that and I'm going to change some of the settings, of course. I'm not going to just uh, drag and drop it. So for the most part, I'm going to get some of the base colors first. And I'm going to also add the um, emissive as well. And I'm going to use a gradient for that, for the leaves, so that they uh, glow more at the base, just like in the concept. And then the other areas, I'm just going to have to paint annually. This could be done by just using ID maps, but honestly, it doesn't take that long to just do it manually either. Then I added a curvature just to um, make it so that the, uh, the curvature just comes out a little bit better and it just looks a little bit sharper as well. Then I used the wall space just to add a little bit of color variance as well. So it doesn't look like this uniform uh, kind of blue color. And that's pretty much it for this one. So here is the final result. Uh, this is viewing it in Marmot Set Toolback. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this one, uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll hopefully see you in a future video, guys. 
Would you like to learn 3D modeling? Do you ever wonder how 3D models are made? Well, you see, making 3D models is actually not as complicated as it looks. Typically, models are made from simple geometric shapes, like a cube, and slowly transformed to create cooler looking shapes. For example, like this character. Hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time to cover everything. Click on the link below now to get started. When you click the link, it will show you exactly the steps to making 3D models from scratch. You'll see everything you need to know to get started, and by the end of the course, you will have made some really cool 3D models, like this room. Like I said, this is a short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. Click the link below now to see exactly how this is done.